Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from My Heat. So we're going to carry on with the uh, Kenneth Engine Stationary, or I'm sorry, the Kenneth Well Stationary Engine Build. That's a mouthful, you know. Um, so anyway, where I left uh, last off, we kind of uh, dry fit everything together and and looking pretty good. Uh, recall though that I didn't uh, dish these holes. I had to make a tool. So this is the tool that I made for it, and basically it's just a receiver here and. Uh, a peg and then there's a radius here and then this is the sample I done I guess you could tell that but basically you know you'll put that through the hole drive it down and then that'll form the radius so we want to form the radiuses on the insides or on the uh, firebox door that's next and then the firebox uh, is uh, done other than I obviously I need to paint um, the end plates and I need to make smaller nuts but we talked about that so I need to pull this apart and then uh, I'll get the camera set up and we'll dish these holes and then we'll move on to uh, the next part which should be the boiler so I'll catch you here in just a minute when I get set up okay I have the uh, firebox sides removed I still got to clean up the die and this one here still has the uh, plastic uh, protection coating on it but basically uh, I filed a couple flats on this here so it can be uh, mounted in the vise and we're just going to poke our tool down through here and set it in and we're just going to drive this home. And so you see how it forms that nice radius there. So let me do these another one here and I'll show you. You can fill it bottom out. So simple as that. So I'm going to do the rest of them uh, off camera and then uh, I'll come back in here in just a couple minutes. Okay, so both uh, uh, firebox sides, uh, you know, have dished holes now. Looks a lot better. Of course, these need to be cleaned. So got, uh, you know, layout die or sharpie mark on the inside. The tool actually worked pretty good. I did have to uh, grind a radius cutter. That's why I didn't finish it on the uh, last video in order to make this. See if I can get in here. I guess you could see the radius there. Uh, worked out pretty good. It did slip in the vise, put a couple burrs on there. I'll have to knock those off before I put them in the box uh, in case I might want to use this again. So that was a handy tool and it's a good little technique to know. So I'm really pleased with that. So that uh, pretty much concludes uh, everything that we had to do with the firebox. So it can go on in the box of parts. And then the next thing that we have to do is the boiler. So um, I've thought about this for a bit and I've asked questions and whatnot. So I've made uh, a tool. Let me see if I can find my bits and pieces. I have a, a couple pieces of copper here that I've cut out from from the. Uh, uh, actually, it was a piece of this tubing that I had. I, you know, I just split it and flattened it out and cut my discs out. So I have my uh, my boiler shell, the tube, and. I got my end pieces. Now the end pieces have to be formed um, into uh, some cup shape that will get silver soldered into the ends of the tube. And then there's some eighth inch uh, uh, pipe, copper pipe that uh, supply the um, steam to the engine and then one as, a, as an exhaust. And then of course there's a, a hole here for a bush that um, We'll take the safety valve. Now, the safety valve that's described in, or you know, that's described here is made with a, um, uh, a, a brass screw, and then there's a slight chamfer there, and then you kind of bed it down, it's held in with a screw, and I mean, a, a spring and a little nut. Um, but now, watching Emma's videos, it looked like they didn't work too well, so I, I was just going to buy one, but now I've since have changed my mind. I bought. Uh, uh, LBC's uh, Titch book and he shows you how to make a safety valve in there so I think I'm actually going to try that. So I did buy um, some 516 by 32 taps and die so that I'm going to tap this here because this way if I can't make it that's a standard sort of ME thread that if I were to buy a um, pressure relief valve I would be able to find one that fit. So uh, in order to form these little cups I made a tool, if I can find it, there it is, to 
to form the end pieces around. Now these were a couple practice with some scraps, obviously it's scrap because it's got um, solder on there, soft solder that you can't get off. And then I was able to use this to pressure turn this turn it down, but we'll get to that in a minute. So uh, these I've already annealed, so they're soft. So let me get set up in the uh, in the uh, vise and let's uh, let's start forming some boiler ends. So I'll catch you here in just a minute. Okay, so the only thing I really done here is I took my uh, my centering square and found the center of the disc, and then I marked a a I don't know if it shows up. I marked a uh, circle around there to give me you know, basically the same size as or maybe just a hair larger than my forming tool here so that when I put it on there I could see that I'm centered up. Now these don't have to be perfect but I want them to be fairly close. So uh, now I did do a couple samples so maybe I shouldn't be as nervous about this as I appear to be but uh, so really all we have to do is got this clamped in here and we're going to start forming this around. I'm using a soft hammer and I'm going I don't know that's probably about halfway and I'm gonna hold that and make sure I keep it in position my hands are probably in the way here spin that around there and we're gonna continue forming Now I'm trying to do a glancing blow, so I roll it over this radius edge that I got on here. Now the radius edge, of course, obviously don't want any sharp corners. And to get it to pull down tight to the form tool, or to the form. So, like I said, I'm I'm new at this. You know, Mr. Factotum, he's uh he's doing an engine build of a. Of a meter made, which is a, 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 or maybe it's a modified meter made. I don't, I don't remember, but it's an 06. I think he's doing an 062 version of um, of the sweet pea. And you know, he claims uh, he he's a beginner, but now you want to see a real boiler being built, you need to check him out. All right, so now as we work this, the copper is going to get hard. Okay, and uh, you run risks of uh, of uh, of splitting or cracking the copper. So that's as far as I'm going to go with this round. I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to I'm going to beat this other one down and then uh, then we're going to anneal them. So I'll bring you back here uh, when I'm ready for that. Okay so the first uh, the ends have been um, started to form you know the, the, as you uh, work copper they uh, will work harden and you know you risk the uh, risk of uh, you know, cracking it or whatever. So we have to uh, make the soft again. We do that by a process called annealing. Now, um, copper. The nice thing about it is that uh, it uh, uh, and other cuprous alloys to anneal them. You simply just heat them up to red heat, and then uh, you you can either let them air cool uh, or quench them. What I'm going to do is heat them up to red heat, let them um, cool to black, and then I'm going to quench them. Now, uh, I could just, since uh, you know, I'm not soldering on these yet, I could just quench them in water, but I have uh, over here in this bucket here that you see just on the edge of the camera, uh, I've prepared some uh, pickling solution. Now, pickle is normally uh, sulfuric acid and uh, a diluted sulfuric acid, I think, which is car acid. Uh, I'm taking the safer uh, approach here, so I have a, a citric acid. So there's about uh, a quart and a half of water, three pints of water in this bucket and I got this whole seven and a half ounces of citric acid in there so hopefully that's enough but uh, that seemed to work okay when I was uh, pickling and cleaning up the uh, boiler tube. So uh, what I need to do now is uh, fire up this torch and I'm only using propane. Um, uh, hopefully I got enough gas here. If not, I'll have to uh, pause the camera and get another tank and, and try it again.
turn red. I don't know how well that's picked up on the camera. But that's up to red heat, so we know that's hot enough. That'd be softened. We'll move over to the next one, and then while that one cools to black, I'm gonna drop it in the pickle. Okay, that's come up to red heat. We'll let it cool to black. There we go. And we'll dip it in the pickle. Okay, now the pickling solution, the nice thing is that, uh, you know, when you heat it up, you generate some um, some scale and, and that sort of stuff. And, and uh, quenching it will sort of help remove some of that, but we'll have to clean it all up later. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna uh, take the former again and uh, put the uh, pieces back in the vise and, and, and continue that process until uh, the boiler ends are formed. So when I get to the last one, I'll, I'll, there's a couple things I want to say about it, and then, uh, but I'll bring you back then. So we'll see you here in just a second. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm on the second, you know, you've seen the first one, I, I kneeled it, and then this is the second one. So I, I finished the first one, uh, hang on, let's see if you can see that. Yeah. Okay. So I finished the first one, and uh, I'm, I'm part way around, or mostly around, with the second one. Now, the thing that I want to mention here is that uh, my form uh, ID, or the outside diameter of my form, is based on the tube's uh, inner diameter, right? Minus twice the thickness of the wall, right? So that's how I derived at. Um, my uh, OD for my my form but now one thing I want to point out is that is this copper folds over is going from a large area to a, a smaller area and the metal has to contract so when we're done with this what we'll discover like with this one here is that the boiler end cap is just a little bit too large to go in there right so what I'll do is I'll, we'll go to the lathe and we'll, I'll pressure turn this and skim this until that's the right diameter to go into the tube. So, but the only other thing that I wanted to mention here is that, um, now I'm a, new, I'm a newbie here, okay? I'm, I'm, this is something I've never done. I did a couple practice pieces and that spoke volume. So if you're new to this, uh, if, you, if you've got some scrap that you can practice on, great, um, but copper is expensive, so if you don't, I understand. So as we finish up, you notice that when I hit this, I'm hitting a glancing blow. The copper is soft, so I'm using a soft hammer. And the idea here is that I want to get this to lay right down on, tied up against my former. So I'll keep working that around like that and it doesn't take a lot of pressure at least for this copper or for this thickness to uh, form it now the stuff that mr. Fact factotum done you know on making the uh, he's making a five inch locomotive so it's uh, you know the boilers much 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 more substantial this is considered a toy you know what he's building as a working engine so I imagine it was uh, a little tougher to do and maybe maybe Mr. Effect Totem can comment on that. So I'm just going to keep going around this like so really paying attention to where the copper is coming against the former and to make sure that it's bedded up against there. So when I get these uh, completed I'll uh, bring you back in and we'll move on to the next step. Okay so both uh, boiler end pieces are made. Of course I, I need to turn them down a little bit so that they are a proper fit on the tube. Uh, in the boiler tube. So as we look at the drawing here we see that uh, there's an exhaust pipe. We'll, bend, uh, we'll have to anneal this and bend it to shape but 
probably won't do that until it's actually um, put into the uh, block that, that takes it. All right, so we see that uh, there's two holes. There's an, there's an eighth inch hole that goes in the end of one of these here to hold the, uh, uh, the supply, uh, the supply uh, uh, tube. And then there's a uh, hole up here that's uh, drilled number 10, I'm thinking 3 8 I'll, I'll find the closest uh, size to that and drill that. So I need to mark this tube um, and drill this hole. You guys have seen that, so I'm not going to show that and bore you with that. Um, so I have some uh, half inch brass here. Now, normally brass is uh, not a good thing to use for uh, a boiler. I think phosphor bronze uh, or gunmetal I think are better. Gunmetal, by the way, I think is uh, is uh, red brass here. Um, but anyway, um, but this is a toy and this is a uh, low pressure. Uh, it's only going to be running at about 30 PSI, I think. So brass would be fine. Uh, the problem is I think at high temperatures the uh, zinc that's in brass uh, de-zincifies, right? So it becomes brittle and soft and it's kind of useless and becomes unsafe. And then of course I got two uh, pieces of eighth inch copper pipe. Well that's some, that's some small stuff. I got a couple here cut just a little bit over 60 uh, millimeters long. So one will be my uh, supply and the other one will be the exhaust. So we have those. So let me um, let me uh, get these holes drilled and uh, and then maybe I'll meet you back here or we'll meet you at the lathe. I guess uh, it'd be a surprise, but you'll know here in just a second. Okay, so I'm over here at the lathe and what I've done was uh, I can't really grip the uh, end caps that I formed in the chuck without deforming them. So I'm taking the former and using my live center and I've this is just a piece of sandpaper with a smooth side in the back just to help provide a little grip to the hard jaws of the chuck and I've tightened this in here and and uh, we're, we're going to use the friction or the pressure so that I can turn the diameter. Now to determine the diameter that I need these I've taken the tube and you know I've taken my calipers and I measured across it several times in several places on both ends and I just averaged them all out. Okay. So the average ID of the tube is an inch and 527 thousandths. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm shooting for. Maybe just a hair bit, uh, maybe just a, a, maybe a thou bigger for an interference fit or, or right on. Just the, the point is I, want, I need to be able to drive the end caps into the tube. And when I heat everything up as things expand, I, I don't want it to fall through when I solder. So the only other thing is that, you know, I went ahead and drilled the, I went with a 3 8 hole here and uh, so the tube's ready and I'll keep it off over here to the side. Um, now you'll notice, let me zoom in here a little bit. Okay, you'll notice that I didn't get that very well centered, uh, but that doesn't matter as long as, uh, you know, I could trim it off flush. As a matter of fact, I'd like to know a good way um, that if I did want to turn this to size, how could I hold that without damaging it? Um, now I guess I could slowly, you know, cut it off, but then you know, I don't really want to score this up either. So, you know, would, would super glue hold that on an aluminum chuck or something like that? So anyway, that's, that's some uh, information folks can pass back to me. So what I want to do is I want to sneak in here with uh, this little carbide cutter and uh, and I'm going to take very very light skim passes uh, and then I want to measure frequently and then when I get to an inch uh, 527 thou I'm going to stop. So I'll uh, I'll show some of this machining won't show all of it because I know you've uh, uh, you guys have probably seen this but let's get started. Might help if I engage the belt huh? Let's take a look and see what we got. Okay, I've not quite cleaned up all the way around it yet, so let me uh, let me take off just a little bit more. Okay, let's uh, let's take a measurement. Hopefully, I got enough space here.
All right, so I'm at an inch five, uh, about five thirty. So I could take off about three more thou. I guess I'll go ahead and dial that in or attempt to dial that in. Let me get my geezer goggles on so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, let me get another measurement. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. I'm getting 525, 30, 40, 5, 542. I must have really mismeasured a while ago. Let's get back in here and take a look. Twenty-five, thirty, yeah. So I still got a few to take off. Okay, well I'm gonna pause the camera and then uh, I'm gonna take this down and not bring it in for the last pass. So I'll catch you here in just a minute. Okay, I think I have the last pass. I did try to feed in from this way, but it it slipped. You can see it peeled my sandpaper out. So, but anyway, let's see. Uh, let's get another measurement here and see where we're at. I think we're there. Okay, so I'm about 527, 528. I think that's close enough. So let me uh, loosen this out. <clears throat> I stuck in there. But fortunately, I kept my arbor. All right. So let me zoom you out so we can see. Yeah, that, that just wants to start. So, oh yeah, that's gonna drive in there fine. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other cap. And, um, then I'm going to take one of these, uh, since this one's done, I'm, I'm going to file this up a little bit. Uh, maybe take it to the sander or something, if I can hold it. And I'm just going to put a slight bevel uh, on the edge here so it makes driving it into the tube a little easier. But like I said, I don't think it really matters that uh, it's not exactly even all the way around. The most important thing here is that when I put it in there that we're not blocking the bushing hole. The bushing's got to go in there. So, and uh, I can almost put that all the way flush, but I actually I'm going to leave it stand proud just a little bit, maybe 16th of an inch or something like that. All right, so um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and turn the other one and uh, pause the camera. When I get done with the other one, uh, we'll bring it back in. So, I'll catch you in a minute. Okay, so I have the boiler tube here. Uh, I have this one drilled. Uh, now, because I didn't have sandpaper, that is a little marked up, but I'll sand it just a little bit. Uh, that'll go in here. Like I said, as long as uh, it doesn't exceed or go past the boiler bush, we're good. And then, of course, got one for the back end here. So, uh, be just a little bit of just a small chamfer on the lip to get it started, and then that'll be ready. So, the only piece uh, that's left to um, make for the boiler is the boiler bush.
So according to the drawing, the bush is uh, about 13 millimeters tall, made with half inch diameter brass, and gets a 5 uh, 16 by 32 hole tapped all the way through it. And it's got about a 3 millimeter shoulder that's going to uh, got to be the size to fit into the boiler. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to face this off. Okay, the bar's uh, faced off. So now I need a shoulder. The diameter of my hole, which I drilled at 25 64 Okay, so the diameter there will be, uh, let's see, I think it's uh, 390 roughly. So let me uh, let me touch off here. Now this isn't uh, this isn't critical, so I'm just going to use a scale. Got a handy dandy scale here that uh, Patrick got for me. Thank you, Patrick. I told you they'd come in handy. All right, so that's about an eighth-inch step. And let me get a measurement on here just to get an idea of where I gotta go. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so we're at uh, 475, 85, 90, okay, about 497. All right, so I'm just going to take cuts here until I'm close. Okay, I'm just going to keep taking cuts like that until I get down the diameter, and I'll bring you back in for the next operation. Okay, the shoulder's been turned down. I was going to turn it to size, but then I remember, you know, uh, if my drill uh, over drilled or something like that, I should turn it to fit the hole. So I took the last few little passes very slow. That's a that's good fit. There's a there's no play, so that that'd be just fine. So the next step here is that um, I need to drill it and uh, tap it. Um, for uh, 516.32. So let me uh, get set up for that and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so I got the uh, center drill in and I'm going to drill in about probably three quarter inch. Uh, 9 30 seconds is the uh, tap drill size for 516.32. So let's get this in here. Alright, and because I'm an amateur, I'm just putting a line on the uh, bit about where I want to stop. Of course this this uh this bushing is only a half inch long. Alright so I've went in there about three quarters of an inch deep. Alright so let me uh let me get the tap set up and uh I'll be right back here with you. Okay so I have my spring loaded tapping tool in here. Uh, get that up here and lock the tailstock down. And put a little pressure on here and let's let's get this tapped. And I'll go ahead and tap to the bottom of the hole. Okay, that's it there. So let me back this out. Oh, it's a lot of threads. Okay. All right, so now the next thing to do here is to uh, part it off at about a half inch or 13 millimeters long. So let me get the parting tool set up and uh, I'll be back here in just a minute. Okay, I've got the parting tool in here, just a hair over 13 millimeters, so that gives me something to turn around and face off on the other side. So let's get this parted off and uh, finish this part up. 
That's probably going to be hotter than a pistol. All right, so that's uh. Find you in the camera there. Okay, so that's parted off. I'm just going to turn around, clean this up, and face it on down to uh, uh, 13 inch or 13 millimeters or half inch or whatever, and and then uh, I'll meet you over at the bench. Okay, well I think this uh, video has probably run on long enough. It's probably going to be 30 minutes or so after I get it all crunched up. So uh, to recap, the um, got the boiler shell done. There's the hole for the bush. Here's the uh, bush that goes into the top of the boiler. And we have both end plates are complete. This one has a hole in it, of course, for the steam supply pipe that just, just goes in that hole, like so. Got to go in this end. And of course, this on the other end, this will be the exhaust pipe for, for the uh, let me zoom you down here. This would be the exhaust pipe for the uh, engine. And then of course this is the other one that goes back here. So all the boiler components are made. Uh, so the next thing to do, uh, of course I haven't made the safety valve yet, that'd be a different video. Uh, so the next thing to do is uh, silver solder it. You know, and this is the part I've been, I don't know, I can't tell if I'm excited or dreading, but I, you know what, we're just gonna have to do it. So I did get some silver solder, I bought some 45% uh, uh, safety silk, okay, brazing alloy. Uh, it's 45% silver. Uh, that's kind of what was uh, recommended for, you know, to get uh, a good cleanup and that sort of stuff, good polishing. And I did get some uh, stay silk uh, uh, flux. So that uh, the subject of the next one will be the uh, boiler solder, and then uh, you know the boiler will be done. So. Um, in the meantime, uh, hey, I, I want to appreciate you guys' patience with me. I've been stuck in the basement of my house doing some work, so this has uh, been a while for this one here to come out. So thank you for being uh, patient. Uh, thanks again to uh, uh, Miss Emma uh, from Spare Room Machine Shop. You know, she uh, built one of these, and it fired up my interest enough that I wanted to do one too. I'm excited about it. And I also want to give another shout-out to Mr. Factotum. Uh, now, uh, he's uh, a fellow that's building a... Uh, uh, a meter made. It's a uh, 062 version of the Sweet Pea, 5 inch gauge uh, locomotive. And uh, now you want to see a boiler being made, check out his videos. I'll put a, I'll put a link uh, here on the screen and uh, or down below here in the description. So other than that, hey, thanks for watching. If these videos interest you or anything like that, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. And other than that, have a blessed day.